You know what? This is a really valid point. So black women created a trend for black women to follow black women. We didn't bash white women, we didn't bash black men, but for some reason, there are some black men and white women who are upset that black women are following black women. Meanwhile, some black men decided that they were gonna create the passport bros trend because black women were not their preference or their cup of tea, and we were not submissive enough, and we were not this, and we were not that. Like, literally, they created a trend to um, disrespect black women and uplift other women. And now they're mad that black women are affirming black women. They don't see the difference in those two trends. One is affirming and one is bashing. But in the meantime, it's not black women doing the bashing. I don't know if you're woefully misinformed or just outright lying, but this is complete, this is complete cap and shit. And I can personally tell you that the passport girls uh, movement, passport girls, that's what we'll call it. But I'm referring mainly to American black women. I'm gonna tell you that the passport girls movement started in 1975 from what I, my personal experience and memory. I was born in 1969. And I remember in the mid seventies seeing moderate to uh, upwardly uh, mobile women, black women, uh, going on vacation overseas and then things just changed okay I never complained about it I never gave a shit all right when I was a kid and I was seeing these things uh, the, some of these were acquaintances and relatives and you know I didn't care I was a little kid you know I was living my life and whatnot I, you know I hope they were happy they found what they were looking for but I noticed that I never saw another indigenous you know American indigenous black man in their lives for the most part, I never saw that. And if I did see an American black man in their lives, they were uh, here to do something. They were uh, doing a service like a plumber or somebody working on a house or something like that or helping them out with some other kind of way. But I never saw them romantically intertwined with another black man and shit. And one of the reasons that, you know, personally, I think that was happening is that they just made a pact amongst themselves that they, you know, the American black man was uh, person non grata. You know, any other way they had a bad experience and shit. You know, I don't discount anybody's. Unlike black women who do this all the time, every day, it's instinctual. It's genetic. You know, you black women, you discount the experiences of black men. And you don't even realize it and shit. You don't realize how damaging that is and whatnot. And I say it's a tragedy and shit. And it's the, it's the reason the Passport Bros movement exists today. Right, because we're fed up and we're tired of your bullshit. Okay, we're tired of listening to you talk. We don't care what you say. But I cared enough to make this fucking video because you're woefully misinformed. The other reason that I care to make this video is because I went and looked at your little website and you have you you say you're a you know, you want to teach black history and everything. So if you want to talk about this if you want to talk about passport women, black women the shit started in the mid 70s and it, it goes up until today and whatnot. And I would honestly like to let you know that the black boys were ignored. All right. They were treated. They were treated less than. OK. And the girls were coddled and shit. And when they came of age, they were they were, you know, some of them were escorted to these uh, countries like, you know, uh, Jamaica and, you know, some Haiti and shit. You know, so some of them, yeah, some of them went to like fucking Canada, if you can believe that. And they're just going anywhere, getting these black, these uh, uh, Caribbean dudes, these non-indigenous black men and shit. They, the only requirements they had to be non-indigenous and whatnot. You know, I seen a Honduran motherfucker growing up. You know, I seen a lot of different dudes. I never hated none of them. I never hated none of them. I understood on some level what was going on, and it was it was something to see. You know. I never thought, I never gave it a thought and shit until now I have to hear black women trying to, you know, run their mouth and you know you're lying, by the way, it's total cap. Everything you're saying is cap. The movement started in the mid 70s and up until today, the black women have been traveling overseas for period interest, you know, as well as just vacationing. They were going there to get digged down. They were going there looking for sexual gratification. The only requirement is that the motherfucker not 
not be American black. Okay, not be a, a, a foundational black American man. I saw this shit. I won't put my personal business out there. I could go into, you know, I could pull out photographs of, of various different uh, dudes, you know, from other countries, from other black countries, uh, other black people or shit, you know. I've seen that shit. And I think it's a, you do yourself a disservice to be disingenuous and shit because you, you feel shitty. Yes. Black men are talking shit about black women and whatnot. And we're not going to stop and shit. I'm going to talk shit about you. I'm going to talk shit about a lot of black women. As much as I feel like doing this shit. For as long as I feel like doing. For as long as I'm able to do it. I'm going to talk shit and whatnot. And I'm going to do my best to teach young men. To get the fuck out of this community and shit. To make it better and shit. In spite of itself. Okay. When you send these native sons out. You know they're finally getting some attention. And you. Guys want to be a Kimberly Crenshaw in mass, you know, trying to drag the motherfucker down, trying to grab his legs and be a millstone and keep him. You know, how come you can travel? You can date out and marry and shit and have biracial children and shit unopposed. But you you have a, a, a certain mindset when it comes to the male contingent of your community and shit. You need to ask yourself that. If you truly believe as you say, then I hope that you seek counseling, okay? You have a mental illness and shit. But I will tell you, I was born in 1969, and I personally witnessed there as a child, women traveling back and forth over there like you wouldn't believe. And then I started seeing the motherfuckers in the States and shit that they met over there, all right? And a lot of you bitches... Keep talking about how, um, you know, the women over there will take advantage of the brothers from here. And I want to tell you a shit. I saw a lot of black women get finessed and shit because they didn't want to change. They didn't want to, you know, come to the table and shit and work things out with their man after they betrayed their man and ran them out the house and shit for, you know, federal programs and shit. A part of COINTELPRO. Why don't you, you know, you're going to talk about it. Get it right and shit. You know. Go do your due diligence instead of just running your mouth and shit. You know, you think because you can sit up there with a nappy afro and, and a sweater on and shit, and you you going to go overboard and shit, you know, because you, you a red bone and shit. You got to go overboard this black shit. You ain't now. You ain't for the fucking cause and shit. And I ain't going to listen to this shit. You, a, you know black woman I hear in, my, in earshot saying shit like that will go unposed, unopposed. All right? You guys started the passport movement and shit. You guys started the uh, toxic, blatant-ass misandry that you passed down for generation from woman to woman and shit that has become a cancer in our community and shit. So much that niggas got to get the fuck out and, and reboot the shit. You stay over here with the niggas, over here the Sims and the white knights and the male feminists and the, the low-down-low niggas, those your guys, okay? Those are the guys for you and shit. You, you hold that close. You... You cross your shit in front of your chest, Wakanda Forever style, and you hold your nuts and shit, okay? You hold your masculine nuts. All right? And you get it straight, okay? You're going to do it. You do it right and shit. Don't worry. I'll be here to help you. I'll be looking over your fucking shoulder and shit. You ain't going to lie. Okay? You ain't going to come up with the, the misandrous, toxic-ass, black female version of, of uh, critical race theory. There are those in our community beset by the kinds of spirits that seek to destroy us. We need to think robustly just for instance about the demon of disinformation that permeates our communities and that renders some of our most vulnerable men, our most visible men, the Kanye's and Kyrie's, the Drake's. Keep Megan Pete's name out your Okay. The old people won't get it, but the young people do. The Drakes and Tory Laneses of the world, foaming at the mouth, rapidly spouting anti-Semitic, anti-Black, anti-feminist, anti-factual statements. This message has been paid for by the Dusties. Yes, the niggas you love to hate.